Most Dragon Ball fans would agree that the Cell Saga is the pinnacle of sagas in the Dragon Ball Z show runtime, and if you think otherwise, you're wrong. But for me, it is my favorite Dragon Ball Z saga. So you know we gotta get some figures from it. So firstly, you gotta have Cell, but they don't have a perfect Cell remake yet. That figure's like 500, it's not worth it. But who are the big hitters in the Cell Saga? First you have Gohan, his figure's not out yet. And then you have Goku, his figure's dog sh But then after those two, you have Vegeta and Trunks. And those are the figures we'll be looking at today in this review. I figured I'd just open the box on here before actually getting into the figures. I got these figures from a store called Lil Thingamajigs. They sell a lot of anime stuff online and sometimes they have figure arts in stock. So I decided to get some of these because they have a buy one, get one 50% off on all figures. And here they are outside of the packaging. I'm just gonna throw the box over here. On the right, we have Super Saiyan Vegeta, also known as Awakened Super Saiyan Blood, and Super Saiyan Trunks, the infinite latent power. Infinite latent superpower. Sorry, I can't read. So I figured I'd review both of these figures at once since they pretty much use the same body there's not going to be too much different between the two of them except for like accessories and stuff here are the backs of the box all right first up we got vegeta looking rather dashing if i must say so myself i wasn't really sure how i'd feel about this super saiyan glow hair but it does look pretty nice trunks up here next i do not have the other trunks figure the one where it's like the uh, boy from the future or like his first appearance so i'm gonna try to get that one soon if i'm not mistaken they're doing a reissue and hopefully the reissue has a lot of the fixed qc so i'm just gonna wait for that father and son we're gonna do a double up review today since these guys are pretty freaking similar so yeah i'm excited and let's get right into it now here they are both figures on the table and i thought this was going to be a shorter review but now thinking about it i have a lot to say about these guys so we'll kind of see how it goes for a 35 dollars action figure so we'll jump straight into it starting with appearance and as you can see both these guys are pretty much modeled the same way obviously trunks is going to be taller than vegeta because vegeta is a short king is this just a short guy thing you talk a lot of shit for a washing machine and no i'm not just saying that because you're an android i'm saying it because you're a both of them have the classic blue saiyan armor that is worn throughout most of the training done in the cell saga which i think is very nice and also the main other feature with their appearance is their glossy yellow shiny hair and i know quite a few people have a problem with this because shf kind of has inconsistencies with coloring super saiyan hair because i mean if you compare it to the super saiyan goku that came out a few years ago it doesn't look anything like this and kind of the further back you go the more you realize that each saiyan's hair kind of has a different color of yellow which is really weird but for these guys it kind of makes sense because these are repainted figures so of course they're going to add some shininess and difference to their hair so it doesn't really bother me all too much but for appearance i don't really have anything else to say about these guys they look really accurate to me and i think for 35 dollars figures they have done themselves with how they look of course they're repaint so obviously appearance is going to be a big thing for these dudes now we'll get into articulation i'll use vegeta as an example so the heads can move down a little bit. It kind of moves with the neck, but not really. Heads can move up. Oh, wow. That is a lot more than what I was expecting. I didn't think it would move very far back because of the neck. It's kind of blocked by this shoulder piece. Let me see if Trunks is like the same way. No, I mean, kind of. Trunks can look down better, but you can look up kind of worse. Vegeta, it's the opposite, so that's interesting. I didn't actually realize there was a difference with the head. Arms can go 90 degrees, not really more than that on both figures, so you can get them to T-pose. Not much more than that, though, unfortunate, but they're $35 figures. That's kind of standard with these dudes. And then double bend at the elbow, bicep swivel, hand rotation, all of that. The butterfly joints on both these figures kind of suck booty because as you can see, they both go out about this far, but then they're blocked by like the chest piece of the Saiyan armor. So they're really not engineered very well. You can't even get the hands to like get super close to do like final flash or any blasts that take two hands. It's uh, it's really unfortunate. But yeah, arm articulation is not the greatest. Ab crunch, it moves back a way, way much, but you can obviously see a gap. And it can crunch down 
probably this much. I think I'm using a bit of the torso though, like the, the crotch piece. So, I mean, ab articulation's not bad, but now we're gonna get into the legs. And there was a reason why I used Vegeta for the articulation segment. It's because Vegeta's leg articulation is awful. So in the promo images, you could see him kicking way up high. Yeah, I cannot do this with this figure. I do not know how they did that because if you move the legs more than 90 degrees, they will just pop off like this. At least on Vegeta. With Trunks, I don't think that's the case, but with Vegeta, the legs will literally pop off if I move it more than this. What about the other leg? Oh, yep, the other leg's the same way. Foot has this weird uh, articulation that all Vegeta figures have been having, which I think is weird. There's like a ball on the inside of the foot and it allows the foot to like invert, which I think is weird, but toe bend and then double bend the knee. So that's pretty good. Can I move the leg back? Kinda, sorta. Yeah, it ba back leg is pretty good, but the upper leg, it just sucks, man. And it's just because of the 2.0 dated articulation. And if you have no idea what that means, here's a short video explaining it. Whenever somebody uses the term 2.0 or 3.0 to describe a figure, they are usually referring to the way the body has been sculpted. 2.0 is kind of the outdated design, while 3.0 is the direction that SHF is moving towards. The most notable differences you can see in the arm joint as well as the legs. 2.0s don't really have a butt mold, but most of the 3.0s do. But for the most part, the 3.0s are more sturdy figures and end up being more reliable when you try to pose them. So yeah, it's just unfortunate, man. And if I take Trunks right here, let's see what his leg articulation is like. Okay, so Trunks can kick 90 degrees, barely. And another thing that's persistent with Vegeta, not so much Trunks, I think Trunks, they kind of redefined the body on this. So Trunks is gonna move slightly better than Vegeta at least in my opinion, just because he came out later and I think they fixed a few things like QC. But with my Vegeta, his legs are uneven. As you may can tell, I've been standing him pretty weirdly for most of this video, and that's because one of his legs is longer than the other, or at least it hangs lower. Like, look at that. That's obviously this leg hangs way lower than this one. And you can kind of see this in the crotch piece, like right here and here, this one has a lot more space with this like butterfly hip joint than this one. And so I tried taking both the legs off, just deassembling it. And it turns out that the legs are in fact the same length, but for some reason, wait, are they the same length? I think they are. Oh shoot, maybe they're not. Okay, I'm pretty sure that the legs are an uneven length. I can't really tell, but I'm putting them side by side and I'm pretty sure the left leg is way, 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 way longer than the right one. Imaginary technique, hollow, purple. Starting with face plates slash heads or whatever, both characters have three face plates and no power down head for trunks, which is unfortunate because the original release of this figure did have a power down head. Their second faces are kind of these teeth gritted ones, which, uh, well, this one's not teeth gritted, but this one is. The way you swap these, is pretty simple. You kind of just pop off the hair for Vegeta, but what makes it weird is that the inside of his Saiyan head is flesh colored. And it's the same way with Trunks. You just pop the hair off and then, you know, that's just why. And then for both of the third and final face plates, you kind of have a smirking Vegeta expression and then an angry Trunks shouting expression, kind of like the same with Vegeta. So yeah, I mean, three face expressions, that's kind of not normal. For $35 SHF releases, most have at least four. So I think that's kind of weird, but they're repaints, whatever. And then we're gonna get into hands. So Trunks, including his fisted hands, has six different pairs of hands. Vegeta has nine, so I'm just gonna show the Trunks ones. So the second pair of hands for both figures are these open out blast effect hands, which are pretty normal for most SHF Dragon Ball figures. And then the third pair of hands are these kind of clasped hands, blast effect hands. So, you know, you can kind of get them to do like this. I mean, this is like Kamehameha, I think. So obviously not that, but you know, the blast effects that are similar. The rest are only gonna be Vegeta individual hands, starting with these like martial artist like hands, which only Vegeta comes with again. And, uh, you know, it kind of makes since the Trunks doesn't come with these, but it would have been cool if he came with like something different. Then Vegeta's last hand is the notorious thumbs up or pointing expression to himself right before he gets molly -whopped. And then finally, ending it with accessories, both characters come with crossed arm effects, which you know is pretty cool. 
Some people don't like these because they're scared they're going to break their figures this way. I haven't had any difficulty with these, but you know, popping the arms off and trying to get this to line up is kind of annoying, so I don't want to use it too many times. Time for size comparisons. Here they are staying next to Superhero Goku and Vegeta, and as you can see, I swapped the heads on these two guys just to show what it would look like. This is sweet, dude. I really love the base Vegeta head on that Saiyan armor body. The skin tone matches fairly well. You're not gonna get any like Goku mix match skin tone errors. They swap rather nicely. Their skin tone matches really well. You're not really gonna notice anything too far off. So the fact that I own the base Vegeta really adds value to the Super Saiyan 1 in my opinion. Here they are standing next to the rest of the superhero wave. On the left we have Gohan, on the right we have Piccolo. Here they are standing next to Broly and Gogeta. Here they are next to some Mafex figures. On the left you have Mandalorian 2.0 and on the right you have Mafex 185 Spider-Man. Here they are next to some villains. On the left we have Frieza and on the right we have Imperfect Cell. Would really, really love to see the other two forms of Cell made sometime soon. That would be great as I'm trying to get as many Cell Saga boys as I can. Here they are next to some Naruto figures. On the left you have Naruto, on the right you have Sasuke. It seems like Trunks is just a little bit shorter than Sasuke. I don't know, they're about the same height and this Naruto is freakishly tall, but I'm glad that they're fixing the height of him with future releases. And then finally, for size comparisons, here they are standing next to the SHF UG Tadori and the SHF Satoru Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. And they're gonna be shorter than most JJK figures just because a lot of them end up scaling pretty tall next to Dragon Ball characters. So yeah. All right, now we made it to the end of the review where I give each action figure that I review a score rating out of 10 based on five categories I model these reviews on. This is my way of being objective to the viewer, although this is all just my subjective opinion. So if you disagree with my score, that's fine, but just know that this is my biased final thoughts. Appearance, I'm gonna give both these guys a two out of two. I think appearance is their best quality here because they're repaints, they look shiny, they look cool, they're nice. Their best achievement that I think, and the only one they're getting full credit for in this review is gonna be their appearance because they look cool, they look accurate, and I don't think there's anything wrong with the way that they're painted. Articulation, now, this is getting a one out of two. Trunks is slightly better on articulation, but the Vegeta man, oh my freaking God, the legs are brutal. It's the same thing with trunks. They just don't pop off as easily, but I'm sure that with enough playtime, they will start to pop off. So it's just like the 2.0 body mold is just a piece of crap in 2024. I'm just gonna say I'm so sick and tired of this 2.0 body mold. It is just brutal. Accessories is gonna get a 1.5 out of 2 for both. This is pretty standard for accessories for the price of these figures I decided. You're kind of getting gypped out a little bit with trunks, but I mean there's not too much other hands he could have come with. I don't really remember him doing too much fighting in this suit. All I remember is him fighting semi-perfect cell. It's the same thing Vegeta does. And you know, but all their hands and stuff is reused. The face plates look nice. And then the crossed arms are crossed arms. So, you know, you, you take what you get. I think it's pretty good considering the price point compared to other domestic figures. So that's my thoughts on accessories. Value for money, again, 1.5 out of two compared to other figures for this price point. I think it's pretty good. You know, these are obviously gonna be better than your Marvel Legends, McFarlane figures and that kind of thing. But for other things made by figure arts at this price point, I don't think it's great. And then finally, personal enjoyment, 1.5 out of two. The main reason why I bought these figures is number one, because I wanna collect as many Cell Saga new releases as I can. I'm not going back to the old ones. And number two, I have the base form Vegeta and it looks really cool to have the base form head on this body. And I was gonna end this review by saying if you want this Saiyan armor body to put with the base head or really any Vegeta head because I'm pretty sure they're all swappable the same, then get this figure despite its flaws. But SH Figure Arts did a funny the other day and announced a Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta on this same body mold. So now I can't even go with what I was initially gonna say for this review, which was if you 
dislike the body a little bit, but you don't have any other option, then just get the Saiyan armors because, you know, they'll look good and they'll head swap. Now I can't even say that because they're re-releasing Super Saiyan Blue or remaking it or whatever on this same colored body. So you could probably head swap base form with that body and it might be better. I don't know. It hasn't came out. Some people are thinking that it's going to have the same issues that this body has. I'm a believer that they're going to fix some of their problems because Trunks right here does not have as many problems as this Vegeta. So I'm not ending this review on a positive note for these guys. I'm saying save your bread, wait for that figure to come out. Unless you want Super Saiyan Vegeta. If you want a Super Saiyan form of this guy, then go ahead and get it because they're probably not gonna make one this cheap ever again for a really long time. But if you're in it just for the body mold, like I sort of was, I wasn't, I was in it for the head, but I was more in it for the body mold. If the body mold is your primary reason for buying this figure, then wait for Super Saiyan Blue because that might have a slightly better body. That's enough of me yapping. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and tell me what you liked about the video. If you didn't, leave a dislike and tell me what I improve upon. I created this action figure channel to improve my knowledge on action figures. And if you care which review to see next, check the community tab. We've been running polls on deciding which figures that in my collection to kind of review next. I have no idea who I'm going to put up for next because I do have a big bad toy store pile of loot shipment on the way. So be prepared for a live stream of opening a lot of those guys soon. I'll post more about it on the community tab. I think that'll be a fun way to engage with viewers. And yeah, that's about it. So hope you guys have a good rest of your day or night, and I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream, whatever you see next. Goodbye!